Mindset High status individuals are selfish, seek power and try to obtain that at every possible cost, right? Absolutely not. Those are the people possessed by their shadow. Those are not the individuals you aspire to become. This video will make you highly uncomfortable and if it does, that means that you are the one to gain the most out of it. Things you've been told about what it takes to become a high status or dominant or perhaps the term that I have the most problem with an alpha individual will be questioned in this video. This video will serve as an amalgamation or distillation of traits which I consider to be high status and I'll use media examples to exemplify this. The characters I'll cover all have their problems and we can break them down in many ways shape or forms but I want you to learn to see the great qualities in your fellow human beings, extract and in real life encourage those qualities while subtracting the ones you don't like or that are tyrannical in their nature. Do you want to adopt the mindset of an ethically sound, high status, highly competent individual? If so, then these videos are made for you. Let this video and perhaps even mini-series serve as a guideline towards becoming your positive, powerful and principle-oriented person that you aspire to become. Use it as a loose guideline towards becoming a charismatic, confident and more importantly, a competent individual. So friends, ignite your phoenix within, enjoy and bathe in the upcoming transformational fire. Let's dive straight into a great example. The mini saga of Harvey Specter and David Fox. Harvey and David have bad blood between each other. Both of their egos got flared up in the past and they had a battle. And if you don't do it for her, you will have to do it for everyone. You better watch what you say to me because in case you forgot, you're still living under my roof. Since both of them didn't want to back down. And if you don't back off, I'll take that roof and everything else you have because you just violated half a dozen laws by threatening a tenant. Donna got the authority from Harvey to mediate between them for the betterment of the firm and they both got a win out of it. However, part of that agreement was, unbeknownst to Harvey, that Harvey would represent him in the future. And? You get free legal services from Harvey Specter himself for the next year. Oh, come on, bullshit. There's no way he agrees to that. Oh, he'll agree to it, all right. You mean he doesn't already know about it? No, he doesn't. When that moment comes, Harvey isn't happy. It's a deal, it just needs a little taken care of. In that case, just go ahead and throw it in the trash because I don't work for you and I'm never going to. Uh, I don't think you understand. I'm not asking, I'm assigning. This is part of our deal. He takes on the case, but after he finds out that David Fox has lied to him, this is what happens. As Donna told me, you don't trust him. You're damn right I don't trust him. Because when a man like that hides money, it's not because he's secretly donating to Goodwill. Harvey, he is our client. No, he's not. Let me guess, Samantha told you what I'm about to do. Yeah, she did. You're taking her side. I'm taking my side. She cares about my reputation. You think I don't care about you? You authorized me to negotiate this deal. And if you don't honor it, Fox is going to tell the world. And how's that going to go the next time I try to come to an agreement with anyone? It'll go fine because he has no integrity. Nobody will believe him. I have integrity. You let him go. You're making me a liar. You want to talk about a liar? He lied to my face. And so have a thousand other clients. You were just waiting for an opportunity to let him go. Because we never should have taken him on in the first place. Well, we did. And like I said, you drop him, you're making me a liar. And I don't care if the rest of the world knows it or not. You'll know it, and I'll know it. Now you go ahead and you do what you want. You always do anyway. If you're out for yourself and you were Harvey, you'd say, screw this, Donna. I don't care how you look, you work for me. I care about how this makes me look. Which early in his days, he said something similar. Keeping it from me isn't a mistake, it's a decision. I wanted to protect you. If I had told you the truth, you, you don't keep things from me. You keep things from me all the time. That's because I'm your boss. David Fox wants a fight and I'm gonna give him one. But sometimes in life, as a high status individual, you learn to take one for the team. It's part of your development as a maturing individual. You go from a state of dependence on your parents, family, your childhood to a state of independence and in great relationships to a state of interdependence. But you won't reach that last stage unless you learn to selectively sacrifice for the higher cause. This is one of the skills that differentiate great leaders from shadow leaders. 
So what does Harvey decide? Let's see. I'm here to give you one last chance because I know about the payments to Peter Minto and so does Billows. Shit. You lied to my face and the only reason I haven't dropped you yet is Donna gave you her word. Now what you wouldn't understand. I understand money laundering and knowing the kind of man you are, it's exactly what's going on here. No, you don't know shit about the kind of man I am. Then tell me right now, what the hell is Peter Minto giving you in exchange for $10,000 a month? It's nice representing you, David. David explains what he got from the dude he pays 10k a month. It's not what he's giving me. It's what he gave me. As a child, he robbed his store and the guy didn't press any charges. He took him under his wing and became his mentor. So why is he paying him so much a month right now? I gave him that money because if I didn't, he'd go out of business. If I don't get this building, he's gonna go out of business anyway. After that, Harvey asks him, why didn't you say so in the first place and this is David's response. All right, I need people to believe that I'm ruthless. Wouldn't you rather have people know you're loyal than have them think you're an asshole? Look, Peter Minto taught me how to do business as a gentleman, but there's a reason he can't keep his business alive and I can. Harvey goes ahead and finds a way to possibly solve the case, however, it leaves David with two shitty choices and he isn't happy about it. God damn it, you could have done better. And you could have told me the full fucking story before I only had two days to stop it. So either I look like a sucker or I let the guy who gave me my start go out of business. This brings us to the point of selectively making sacrifices. David Fox wants to be perceived as a badass. Now, he comes to the crossroad where either the world gets to see him as weak in his eyes because he wants to protect his mentor or let his mentor get out of business. Personal gain versus betterment of the people around him. Again guys, as enticing as it is to be the top dog and appearing the most powerful person everywhere you go, it is better to be a person of character and integrity. Yes, David Fox or someone else in this situation may look weaker in the eyes of some people, but those my friends, those are not the people you want to do business with anyway. Helping Peter Minto stay in business doesn't make you a sucker. It does to the world! People who have morals, who live by their principles, people with integrity would not see him as less than, but rather as someone who sticks with their values, as someone who is able to sacrifice himself to a certain degree, guys, don't push this too far, for the betterment of their environment, for the betterment of their friends, family, heck, even for the betterment of their community. What would you do? As your lawyer, I tell you, get your emotions in check. It's a shitty deal and a stupid move. But if I were in your shoes, I'd take it. That, my friends, that is the ethical side of power. That's a value people who want you to become stronger don't talk about a lot. The reason for this is at least twofold. First of all, the marketing aspect isn't great. Second, most men who embark on this journey feel some lack. They are on the side of deficiency. So in order to take them out of this state, the excessive side gets pushed forward. But this means you move from one dysfunctional extreme to the other. It is as Aristotle put it, the golden mean that we look for. This changes from situation to situation, but always beware of it. Just to exemplify this point and make it less abstract, you have cowardice on one side, which is the passive pole or the deficiency pole, and rashness on the other side, which is the other extreme. But courage is the golden mean in between these ends. Values like sacrificing for your people, which is a great quality and even characteristic of great leaders and expression of the fatherly or king's energy, may be less sexy to talk about, but crucial for powerful future men to develop. As Nala from Lion King put it, I tried to make you understand what a true king can be. Scar, a true king's power is his compassion. Take it. I never thought I'd be saying this, but you earn my respect. Another scene, albeit a less clean scene, which comes to mind is between Tommy and Abarama Gold. Tommy Shelby needs Abarama and his men. The reason why doesn't matter for now. Abarama Gold sees this place and wants to buy it. I like this place. 
However, this place is run by Tommy's uncle Charlie, and he can't just give it away like that. So he says, Nothing you see here is for sale, Mr. Gold. Oh, everything is for sale. Everything. Tommy Shelby is a strategic thinker. If he gives him what he wants, he got many problems and loses some of his power. First of all, he's getting walked all over. If he doesn't do it, he'll get into conflict with the person he needs right now with the chance of him having to find another way to get the job done. It's extra work. However, if he does accept it, he's no longer a protector of his realm, of his direct environment, of his friends and his family. So what does he do when he has like his personal gain on one side, but sacrificing his personal gain for the betterment of his people around him? He takes, unlike the previous example, a less clean route. First of all, if Abarama can change the terms of the deal, which is dealing in bad faith, guys, a highly unattractive thing, Tommy, being from the underworld, should be able to change it as well. So he thinks if everything is for sale, well, just watch. Charlie, come here. I'm gonna spin a coin for your yard, Charlie. Tommy. If it's heads, Abby here takes all of this with my blessing. And if it's tails, I fuck your daughter, Mr. Gold. Tommy is playing his game. If he wants something from someone else, he will take it from him. Let him put his money where his mouth is. Just like that, he enters the conflict to protect his friends. It's not the easy route, but it's the one someone with some integrity takes. So make a part of the deal, spin it against the odd. Tommy, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Toss the coin. No. Please don't believe this is a joke. Toss the coin, Mr. Gold. No wages today, but with this penny I will buy a flower to put on your grave. When the time comes. And before that time. Please don't again disrespect my friends or the value property. Here is a perfect place to mention what I said in the beginning of the video. All of these characters have their flaws. Like we all do. But what I want to do is distill some of their great qualities, extract the good and leave out the bad. Tommy has many huge character flaws, but let's leave them for what it is for now. Remember guys, the same thing happens when you are forced to do something you don't support for your boss or perhaps in class. What do you do in those moments? That's where you find yourself. Are you taking the easy route? The route that makes you look the best? Are you accepting a bribe for something? Are you selling out people to get ahead in life? No, 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 no. Why not? Or are you willing to sacrifice whatever personal gain you have and be a person of character and integrity. Power is great to possess. Advancing in life is a wonderful feeling and a great achievement, but never, remember this guys, never at the cost of your character and your integrity. Yes, you may feel good about it for some time, but when you reach that state where you're moving towards, for the rest of your life, you're looking back at the events that got you here in another light. You, you feel some kind of dissatisfaction with yourself however if you do it in the right way in the ethical way in a way that betters the life of people around you guys yes it may take a little longer to reach that same end point whatever that is for you however for the rest of your life for the rest of your days until you go to your deathbed you're living with some kind of pride you don't have regret guys by the way have you noticed that i haven't accepted any sponsorship deals why do you think that is i've put to the side over $32,000 in the past couple of months. Why would I do that? I'll tell you about it in this video on my second channel, which is an unedited continuation of this video. Guys, you can achieve the same and perhaps even greater advancement and power in a longer time span and live with great satisfaction without the constant nagging of taking the easy route, the route where you sold yourself out, the route of weakness. This perfectly brings us to the next point. Let's look at a short example from Game of Thrones. Ned Stark, who is a man, 
Being the steward of the king in its fullness, which we'll cover in the King Warrior Magician Lover videos, has been captured. He gets an opportunity to be released out of his cell, but at what cost? Can you free me from this bed? I could. You want me to serve the woman who murdered my king, who butchered my men, who crippled my son? I want you to serve the realm. Cersei knows you as a man of honor. She knows a tame wolf is more used to her than a dead one. <laughs> you think my life is some precious thing to me? That I would trade my honor for a few more years of what? Of what? He sticks with his morals. This is something most ethically sound high status people have in common. However, this sticking to their morals sounds all lovely, but how do you react when it's your direct superior who tells you to do something you're not comfortable with. Let me show you how a high status, highly competent man deals with that. In Suits, the new managing partner is Robert Zane. He's a high status and dominant figure, but so is an upcoming senior partner called Alex Williams. Here is a little context for the scene we'll observe. Robert Zane has bought a wine distillery in remembrance of his dad's sister. The community of that area, the wine distillers, don't like him coming here with all of his wealth and buying the place up whilst they have been working and living there their entire life. Robert Zane's shadow gets ignited. As a young man he felt powerless when it came to protecting his sister as shown in a previous episode. He's also faced racism all throughout his life. Now when that community doesn't accept him and therefore tries to put him out of business, he loses his cool. He snaps and believes they are being racist. Alex Williams gets called in by him to be his lawyer in this case as he can most likely relate to this racism as a man of color himself. And what do you want to do? I want to send a message that if they try this shit again, there's not going to be a country club. This is what happens in a negotiation. There should be more than that, you son of a bitch. What the hell is your problem? You know what my problem is? The oldest problem in the book for a man like me. Race? Is that what you think this is about? I know that's what this is about. Oh, you pompous piece of I'll shit. Pompous. No, no, I am not gonna sit here and let him accuse me of that. You wanna know why you didn't get your barrels? Because you don't deserve them. And there it is. No, 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 no. See, our families have worked those vineyards for generations. And you just come waltzing in here with your Wall Street money, acting like you own the place, and you've been here for what, 10 minutes? We've been here our whole lives. You bought out that man before you, after he had one down year. And we're not gonna let you get away with it. You tell yourself whatever you want. But you're right about one thing. I'm a big bad motherfucker and I'm here to drink your goddamn milkshake. I think we should try to work this out. Are you goddamn kidding me? There's no way if I'm white, we're in this situation right now. I'm not gonna tell you you're wrong. But you are wrong about how to handle the situation. Well, and you're gonna do what I say. No, sir, I'm not. Because the world's a shitty place and I'm not gonna make it worse. And I don't give a shit if you're my boss. I'm your goddamn lawyer. And you're either gonna take my advice or you can hire someone else. Then call yourself a car and get the hell out of here. I'll handle it myself. Such a great scene, guys. Here you see Alex standing up against Robert. I'm not going to make the world a worse place no matter whether you are my boss or not. Guys, that is character. That is integrity. All his personal gain that he could get, he takes rid of it. Before I show you how this turns out between them, whether he gets fired for this or not, let me make this more applicable to the real world. Let's say you are trying to advance in your workplace and your boss threatens you to do something you don't want to do and if you don't do it, you won't advance. Bullshit out of the question! Bullshit! Who the hell is in charge here anyway, huh? Now, that's a shitty situation, guys. Two conflicting parts of you that come together. In one way you want to advance, on the other side you want to keep your honor and integrity. Now here's where your ethical compass decides which route you're gonna take. The question is, would you rather do something to get somewhere in a way that you'd regret for the rest of your life or would you rather find an ethical way to get there with the risk of taking it longer? By taking that option, you will have mental peace and clarity for the rest of your life. By giving in to your boss, by doing something along those lines, the external world will make you bitter and resentful. Your view of the world gets sketched, it becomes dark and sinister. 
you'll think that's how you have to be in order to get to a certain standing in life. I'll provide a real life example for that in the elaboration on this point on my second channel, I'll link at the end of the video. It's important as a high status person to stick to your principles, even, no, perhaps especially when it's detrimental for you in the short term, but conducive for a clean environment that you inhibit, live in and look after. That's what the king in its fullness does. A video on that is in the making. The real high status, or to use an inaccurate and shitty term, the alphas, is their ability to make their surroundings better, to provide blessing to their people and fertility to their environment. It is the tyrannical king or the shadow alpha that is out only for his own personal gain. Embrace me as your king and as your god. If you are in a similar situation, I'd highly suggest you to slowly transition to another job where the hierarchy isn't ruled by power, but by competence. Coming back to our example, you see Alex here choosing to serve his principles, his people and his environment by potentially getting fired. And you're gonna do what I say. No, sir, I'm not. Because the world's a shitty place and I'm not gonna make it worse. And I don't give a shit if you're my boss. I'm your goddamn lawyer. And you're either gonna take my advice or you can hire someone else. Then call yourself a car and get the hell out of here. I'll handle it myself. Once Alex is driving on his way home, Robert Zane calls him back. But before I show what his boss tells him, let's get to the third and last point of this video. Friends, quick but important message. Certain individuals may mock looking at media examples or mythic individuals for insight into our own potential, but guys, these are ideals of yourself projected onto them. Let your ideals guide you through life. If you see someone possess a great quality, add that to your ideal version of you, the person you wish to become. It's not like you're copying them, it's just you're taking certain elements that you do like and discarding the other elements you don't like. And if you do this long enough, you become this fully developed version guided by your own ideals of the perfect version that you wish to become. I like Jordan Peterson's explanation of this, which I'll cover in the continuation of this video on my second channel, where I upload bare minimum edited videos. Most of the time they're just one take videos. I sit down and let you experience my flow of consciousness, and that is a place where I have a lot of growing up to do. A place where I can develop myself. So you can witness that journey if you wish. By the way guys, my personal planner that I created is back in stock and you can order it via my website. Guys, it's crazy and to link it back to this video. If you aspire uh, adopting a new kind of behavior, you need to be able to remind yourself of that. I made a specific point, I'll show it here, where you can put down the things you want to focus on for that day. Do this over long enough a period guys and it becomes a habit. I haven't been promoting this a lot for the sole reason that I just can't keep up with the demand, at least not the previous time. So I ordered more of them, check out the website, order your copy before they get sold out again. And the reason why I'm so stoked for this is yes it is an expensive planner, if you can't buy it that's okay, you can just write it on a piece of paper. But if you look inside how organized everything is for you, you just need to open it up and let yourself fill in these things which will set your mind on the right path guys. Also, you can put your vision board here. This is what mine looks like. And again, guys, you can plan your month in, you can plan your life goals in. There is like a gym log, place where you can put words that you're trying to learn in. Like there's so many things that you won't find combined in any other planner, guys. And for the people who are new here, the goal of this channel is to provide you tools and strategies that you can implement in your life so you can achieve your desired goals and dreams in an ethical manner. I make videos about power, personal development and body language. If those things resonate with you, consider subscribing. Let's continue with the video. My ladies, all men should keep their word, kings most of all. I did what I did not to slight you. But because I loved another, I know these words cannot set right the wrong I have done to you and your house. I beg your forgiveness. When the ethically sound, high status individuals are wrong, they apologize. They are man enough to know that everyone makes mistakes. They suck up their pride and learn from it. They don't see themselves as less than when they do this, guys. 
they know this is the path of self-development. They know this is a part of the journey to individuation, to integration. Fundamentally, they are aware that their failure teaches them more than success ever will. It's our fault. And when they screw up, they stand in front of it, accept the consequences and take responsibility for their own actions. They know deep down that being a fool is the precursor to the wise man or the sage. Whenever they are called on their shit, they may not like it, but they stay rational. And that's what you see in our continuation of the previous videos. What now? I'm calling to say I'm sorry, I lost my shit. Truth is, if I was in your position, I'd probably feel the same way. So the other alpha apologizes and Alex, he does a great thing, guys. He is understanding. This is a great line, by the way, and it is a tool which you should be able to make your own. I've used this so much in my life after reading How to Win Friends and Influence People that it makes for a significant difference in everyday life communication. You might be wondering, Shoya, I don't get it. What is it that he said? I'll play it again. Please. If I was in your position, I'd probably feel the same way. He is giving the other person, Robert Zane, a way to save face. When you are possessed by your shadow, when you are high up in your negative emotions, when you have ego issues, you will do the opposite and try to tell them, I told you, you are wrong, you never listen, you idiot, or any other form of that line of reasoning. As Dill Carnegie has put it in his book, few of us take the time to consider how to let another save face. We write roughshod over others' feelings, getting our own way, finding fault, issuing threats, criticizing a child, or employee in front of others, we could offer a considerate word or two, take the other person's feelings into account, pull them aside, anything to alleviate the sting. Yet many of us don't take the time to do so. Friends, as a high status leader that you aspire to become, you have to learn this skill. You have to know when people apologize, they are trusting you to be vulnerable with. Learn to handle that with grace, just like Alex Williams did. Also worth mentioning. There can be times when people go too far and you, you'll let them have it. But generally speaking, this is a great skill to develop. It's a great tool to have in your arsenal of verbal dominance. Remember, provide a way to let the other person save face. Moving forward with our scene. Not in my position. You're my lawyer. And if I'm not going to listen to you and go ahead and handle this thing myself, you've got a fool for a client. Something like that. They talk through the strategies and at the end, Roberts want to still send the message that he is in charge. So, this is how he does it. We'll get your ass back up here then. And Alex, don't ever call me fool again. Now, whilst we're on the scene, let's provide you with another gem from the same scene. When your anger and hurtful emotions are subsided. By the way, anger is a powerful tool to overrule the hurt. Hence, why men do this a lot. Another thing that comes to mind, think about the rider and the horse analogy, my friend, from the laws of human nature. Anyhow, Robert Zane exploded before because he thought it was about racism. Then I can build a community tasting room that we all can share. That's very generous of you, Robert. Mind if I ask you what brought you around? Where I grew up, community was everything. We were tight and close, mistrusting of outsiders, and if someone had come in and done what I did to them, community wouldn't have taken too kindly to it, no matter what the color of their skin. But later on, he realized that if he was the one in their shoes, he'd probably react the same way as they did. The community member's response had nothing to do with racism, but all with looking out for their own. By the way, this is another powerful skill to develop and mind shift you have to make. Learning to see things from someone else's perspective is a crucial communication skill that will translate to every part of your life. In the video on how to conduct yourself in a job interview, I'll cover it a little more in depth. I just wanted to call and say thank you, Donna. We worked it out. You and Alex. And it wouldn't have happened without you calling me on my shit. Wow. Calling to thank me. Valuing my leadership and giving me an endearing nickname. Robert, if we're not careful, we could become full-blown friends. Let me provide you one more scene with Raymond Reddington. Raymond wasn't able to protect a loved one, so he got mad. He started venting. No rather projecting onto his friend Dembe. Everything will be fine, Raymond. Oh, for God's sake, Dembe, spare me the mystical reassurance. Everything is not fine. 
Where the hell was the perimeter defense of that damn church? You should have deployed four teams, five teams. Everything is not fine. She never should have been in that godforsaken church. Stop, Raymond. This has little to do with Denbe and nothing to do with that poor girl in there. She's been telling you for months that you're a danger to her baby. This is on you, Raymond. Nobody else. You were wrong to make her believe you could keep her safe. Later on in the episode, and when his anger has subsided, he admits that he was wrong. I'm sorry, Dembe. I know, Raymond. All right, friends, to recap, the three high status unspoken traits covered in this video are first, high status individuals selectively sacrifice their personal gain for the betterment of their team. Second, they stick to their morals and principles, especially in the hard times. And third, when they shit the bed, they own up and apologize. If you like this video and want me to make more high status traits and extract qualities that I consider great, which an ethical high status individual should possess, let me know in the comments below. Here you can see the unedited continuation of this video and here you can check out either three highly confident body language cues or, if the time comes, the next three high status traits. Friends, unleash the power of your phoenix. Booming success is here.